Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be evaluating a function. f of x equals 3x squared plus 3x plus 1. And we're supposed to evaluate f of 1 plus f of 2 plus dot dot dot, so on and so forth, all the way up to f of 10. So we're going to be evaluating. So three dots, which is called ellipsis, means that we have all the terms that are in between in the sum. So let's go ahead and get started with this task. So in order to evaluate f of 1, I'm supposed to replace x with 1. That's going to give me 3 times 1 squared plus 3 times 1 plus 1, which is equal to 7. Great. So we got f of 1, 1 tenth of the task. What about f of 2? 3 times 2 squared plus 3 times 2 plus 1, that's equal to 19. And then f of 3, 3 times 3 squared plus 3 times 3 plus 1, and that's equal to 37. So on and so forth. Wait, isn't there an easier way to do it? I mean, if there's a question like this on this channel, there's probably an easier way to do it. So we're, we're going to be looking for a pattern. And I'll be presenting, by the way, this is not a good method. That's why I wanted to introduce it first. I mean, you can definitely go by this. But what if they ask you to find the sum f1 through f100, right? Then would you evaluate 100 numbers and add them up? You could, but that's not recommended. So here's what we're going to do. First method. I'm going to write the same thing, but uh, my goal is to find the pattern. So let's go ahead and do it. 3 times 1 squared plus 3 times 2 squared plus 3 times 3 squared. And then 3 times 2 squared plus 3 times 3 squared plus 3 times... Okay, what am I doing? Never mind. Rewind the tape. Okay. So the first one, f of 1, is 3 times 1 squared plus 3 times 1 plus 1. And 3 times 2 squared plus 3 times 2 plus 1. And then 3 times 3 squared plus 3 times 3 plus 1. Actually, I don't think I need to write the third row. And then it's just going to be dot, dot, dot. I'm going to write the last one, which is 3 times 10 squared plus 3 times 10 plus 1. Now, I want to add up all these terms, but well, I want to add it in a smarter way. What does that mean? It means that when you're trying to add some numbers, right, you can add them in any order you want. I mean, this is not an infinite sum, so ordering would make a difference, like Ramanujan's problem where you get a negative 1 over 12 from uh, the sum of, you know, integers, whatever, or positive terms. That's such a weird expression, by the way. But anyways, so here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go ahead and group these. So, for example, these go well together. I'm going to add those up together. And then these go well together. And you'll see in a little bit why. And obviously, these go well together. So we're going to add in columns, in other words. Make sense? OK, let's see why this is helpful. And uh, we have three different columns. But I'm going to write all these sums in rows, or maybe on the same row. How about that? OK, so the first one, 3 times 1 squared plus 3 times 2 squared plus dot, dot, dot. 3 times 10 squared. Let me write each one uh, in a different row. And then this one is 3 times 1 plus 3 times 2 plus dot, 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 all the way up to 3 times 10. And then the last one is just 1 plus 1, and that's actually done 10 times. And, okay, I'm ahead of myself. Slow down. This is 1, and this sum should be 10, right? So we're at writing the 1 10 times and add, so that's just 10 times 1. That's the easiest column, by the way. Okay, let's do the other columns. How can I do the first column? Well, I can actually take out a 3, and then this is going to become sum of squares of consecutive integers. And there's actually a formula for that. And that formula, and by the way, I want to move these guys over to the left a little bit so that I can make room for what's coming up. So let's go ahead and move these a little bit this way. Okay, I think that's good. Now, there is a formula for this sum. Uh, which is the formula, let me write the formula for you. 1 squared plus 2 squared all the way up to n squared is n times n plus 1 times 2n plus 1 divided by 6. And this can be proven by induction, but coming up with the formula from scratch is a different task. You're going to use 
difference of two cubes. That's just a different story. We can talk about that later. Maybe we've done it in some of the videos. I can't remember. Anyways, gosh, too many videos. So this is going to give us the following. Three times, there's a three in the front, n is 10, so it's going to be 10 times 11 times 2n plus 1 is basically take the 10, double it, and add 1. That's going to be 21 divided by 6. Great. And this one also has a formula. Hopefully you do know that. 1 plus 2 all the way up to n is n times n plus 1 divided by 2. This is also known as a Gauss sum because, according to the legend, when Gauss was a little kid in fifth grade, uh, he, his teacher gave them a task of adding numbers 1 through 100, and he quickly evaluated that. Again, that's according to the legend. But Gauss was very smart, so he could have done that. Anyways, so this is going to be 3 times 1 plus 2 through 10, and that's 3 times n times n plus 1 divided by 2. And this is just 10. So it's going to simplify each of these. 3 goes into 6 twice, 2 goes into 10 tw uh, 5 times, and 2 goes into 10 5 times, now, notice that we are getting something nice here. 5 times 21 is 105. So we're getting 105 times 11 plus 15 times 11 plus 10. Now, the reason why I put those two together is because I can factor out 11 and always shortcuts. 120 times 11. And hopefully you do know that if you know your multiplication facts in the United States, they were gonna, they're going to teach all the way up through 12. So if you know your 12, 12 times 11 is 132 at a 0 and you are all good to go. So this sum is going to be 1330, or you can call that 1330. And that's going to be the answer. That brings us to the end of the first method. Let's go ahead and take a look at the second method real quick. All right. Now, our second method is very different, and it kind of hits the idea of coming up with the formula for the sum of squares. Remember, I told you that you were going to use difference of two cubes, didn't I? So I kind of gave you a clue. So here's how it goes. If you are really good with expressions in algebra, you should immediately recognize this is actually part of x plus 1 to the third power. From binomial theorem, this is basically x cubed plus 3x squared plus 3x plus 1 minus x cubed. Give me an x cubed and then take it back, right? Okay, cool. They cancel out and we're even. Now, the expression inside the parentheses is x plus 1 to the third power by the binomial theorem, like I said earlier. And we've done, we've done quite a few uh, cubic equations using this formula. So what does that mean? It means that we're trying to add, let me use the sigma summation symbol, uh, not infinity, oh, come on, calm down. So we're, we're supposed to add 1 to the 10, the values of f of n, but f of n is, right? Or I should probably, well, that works, I guess. Uh, since f of x is given as 3x squared plus 3x plus 1, this is going to be 3n squared plus 3n plus 1. And I'm just going to write it as n cubed, n plus 1 cubed, minus n cubed, like this. And then I'm going to separate using the uh, properties of sigma. Sigma is the summation symbol, by the way. It, it's nothing but a shortcut. I can call, go ahead and write it like this, separate these two because they are being subtracted. So I can add them separately and I subtract. Good. And now this is going to be fairly easy to do because if you expand it, a couple terms, if n equals 1 in the first one, you're going to get 2 cubed and then 3 cubed and then dot, 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 all the way up to 10 cubed and then 11 cubed minus 1 cubed, 2 cubed, dot, 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 all the way up to 10 cubed. When you subtract these two guys, a lot of terms are going to cancel out, don't you think? 2 cubed through 10 cubed is going to be gone. 2 cubed through 10 cubed. And you're going to end up with 11 cubed minus 1 cubed, which is 1,000, 1,300, okay, 1,331 minus 1. And that's going to be 1,330 as our answer as before. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.